Hello friends, welcome to Reach Goals. Today I am going to talk about circuit breakers and how it is used in the system design. Some of the questions are like you know why do we need circuit breakers in the system design, how to use circuit breakers in the real world applications or how to provide a fallback in your system when it is when there is a failure right. So why do we need circuit breakers in the system design. So you would have noticed circuit breakers in your home electrical appliances right. So for example if the load of the electric current goes high and in order to pro protect your electrical devices the circuit breaker trips that means it opens a circuit and it doesn't allow the electric current to pass into your existing system. In that way you pre preserve or protect the existing system. Similarly the circuit breakers are there in the software architecture and it helps to protect your underlying system right. So it prevents the damages to other services. Let's say the client is connecting to the services, multiple services through the circuit breaker and the services are not responding, you know, the circuit breaker can on and it can prevent the, the customers or it can prevent the underlying electrical, sorry, it can prevent the underlying software system, right? So it also prevents the damages to the underlying hardware, right? So how does it work? So let's say you have a lot of traffic coming into your system and you know the response time is taking high and still the number of clients are requesting to the services. What happens here is the CPU can spike, right? When the CPU spikes, it can it can add a lot of processes and you know in that case, you know the CPU gets, sorry, in that case, you know the hardware gets heated and it can damage your hardware as well, right? So how does the circuit breaker work? So you have a client, client in turn connects to the circuit breaker and the circuit breaker in turn connects to the services and it connects to the underlying database or any other services. The circuit breaker has a monitoring mechanism and it does two operations. It checks for is the service available and the second one is it checks for is the response time higher than the SLE, right? So in both the cases what happens is circuit breaker opens and it doesn't it doesn't allow the services to be connected with the client when the response time is high or when the service is not available, right? So let's see how, how does this monitoring work. Actually there are three types of monitoring. Let's see one by one. The first one is a simple heartbeat mechanism. So if you see into this picture you have a client, connect, client in turn connects to the circuit breaker and the circuit breaker in turn connects to the database, right? Now if you see the circuit breaker is closed and there is a connection which is seamless, right? So what happens is within the monitor is it has a heartbeat mechanism. It connects to the services and checks if the services is on or off or if it is available or not, right? So when it notices that you know the services are available and it is working good, the connection will be good, right? It is always circuit breakers are always closed and it works. Let's say if I identifies that you know the service is not available. So immediately what happens is the circuit breaker opens, right? And the connection is disconnected and you know it doesn't allow the connection to happen between the client and the services, right? The second one is called the synthetic transactions or I would say it is a fake transactions. So here what happens is you see the same picture like you know client connects to the services through the circuit breaker, right? So when the connections are good, the circuit breaker is closed and it's always good, right? So now what happens is uh, the monitor which is available in the circuit breaker, what it does is it sends a fake transaction to the services. So what happens in this case is uh, it understands whether the transaction is on time. So the transaction will be on time when, when the system is in good health and condition, right? So now it notices the transaction or the response time is within the available limit like you know let's say 15 milliseconds, right? So then everything is good and the transactions happen. Now it notices that you know the transaction time or the response time is higher, right? It takes like you know 100 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds which is not at the expected level. In that case what happens is immediately the circuit breaker opens, right? So that is the way the, the fake transactions or synthetic transaction works. Let's talk about the third one. So the third one is a real user testing monitoring, right? So how, do, how does it work is like you know you have a client connecting to the circuit breaker and in turn connects to the services. So here what happens is the monitoring mechanism what it does is it monitors for each and every transaction right. In that transaction let's say you have configured to have all the transactions or the response time with let's say within 10 milliseconds right. So it will keep on monitoring that right. So now it notices for each and every transactions and it figured out the transaction time or the response time is growing higher right. So it noticed 10 milliseconds then then it is 15, 20, 25 or 30 whatever it is right. So at one point of time it realizes you know the response time is getting higher and higher. 
so immediately what happens is it opens the circuit breaker right so that is called a real user testing monitoring right now again uh, again what happens here is like you know the circuit breaker can monitor continuously and it realizes at one point you know uh, the SLA that uh, sorry the response time is within the SLA limit like it comes back to 10 milliseconds right so what happens is it closes the circuit breaker and it starts working as it is right so the logical algorithm built within the monitor is monitoring is very complex and there are a lot of uh, frameworks and tools available like for example there is something called Hystrix which came from Netflix and you can also look into the spring IO to understand how the circuit circuit breakers can be implemented in your real real time applications as well right if you have any questions you can put in the comments i'm very happy to answer that right thanks for watching have a great day bye